Okay, so welcome back to Calculus 3. Um, and I want to move into <clears throat> this section 12.4 and talk about these, these uh, talk about this, what we call <clears throat> big capital T of T. And uh, here's what it is. Uh, it is the unit tangent vector. It is the unit tangent vector. Um, unit tangent vector. I should have, here's the formula for it. So there's the words describing what this is. And the formula for it is this. It's r prime of t, which maybe you should realize when you take the derivative r prime of t, that's going to be a tangent vector. That's going to be a tangent vector. Uh, so to make him a unit vector, you divide him by his own magnitude, of course. Divide him by his own magnitude. Again, though, what we're dealing with here is functions of t. <clears throat> you know, back in chapter 11, we were dealing with vectors with, you know, 7, 2, 3, you know, 6, 1, 4, you know. Anyway, now we've got vector valued functions of t. So, so this can be quite a, a complicated uh, <clears throat> expression here. Um, but that's the unit tangent vector. Let's, uh, let's proceed here. There, here's somebody too. Uh, this big capital N of t. This big capital N of t is called the principal, principal unit normal vector. So that's cool, the principal unit normal vector. And here's its little formula. It is t prime of t, which means, okay, you gotta calculate this capital T first, and then you can do t prime of t uh, divided by his magnitude. So this gets pretty complicated kind of quickly when you start doing these actual calculations. Um, There's, there's four big things to talk about. Let, I'll pause there. There's two more, two more coming up here. But let me pause there just a second. And, and, and what's, uh, so what's terrible, I mean, really terrible kind of, is the computations that are required to calculate these things. It gets rough. It gets a page, page and a half of cap. But what's not that terrible is to just theorize and talk about these things. So let's do that a second. Uh, <laughs> You know, if you have a curve, R of T, you know, that's a curve in space, you know, it's got an orientation to it, you know, maybe we're traveling that way, we could be traveling the other way, um, then at any point, <clears throat> at any point, uh, there's a velocity vector, you know, uh, or, or, or you could just, I could get rid of the word velocity, I could just call this R prime, you know, a tangent vector, R prime, but it's a velocity vector. Okay, so what I'm calculating here is this unit tangent vector, which is just r prime divided by his magnitude. Okay, so it's just a it's just a unit, it's just a tangent vector that's one unit long. So that's no big deal. I can describe him, I can show you him. He's right here. The unit tangent. He's right here on top of this one, but he's one unit long. Okay. All right, so I'm calling that one. All right, what about this principal normal vector? This principal unit normal vector is normal to the curve. So I got a tangent vector that's tangent to the curve, and then I got somebody that's normal to that. And normal means perpendicular, of course. And you might look at this and say, okay, there are two normal vectors. There's this normal vector, and there's that normal vector. Uh, that's why we use the word principal unit normal vector, because it is this one. It is, it is this one. It's always to the concave side of the curve. It's always, and it's, a, it's supposed to be perpendicular. But it's always to the concave side of the curve. That's the principal unit normal vector. <clears throat> And when you do the calculations, that's how it comes out. If you won't get the wrong one, you'll get the correct one if you do this math. Uh, so 
It's always to the concave side of the curve. Oh boy. <clears throat> so, um, I don't know. This is pretty cool. I mean, this is pretty powerful. To me, what this is, it's kind of like what unit vectors sort of do is unit vectors form their own coordinate system. So you had your I, J, and K, and they are all mutually perpendicular to each other, and they form their own coordinate system. Or just, let's just do two dimensions, kind of like this is. Uh, 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 you just have I and J. And, you know, I is your horizontal unit vector. J is your vertical unit vector. And then every other vector can be written in terms of how, how much I it is and how much J it is, how much horizontal and vertical it is. I mean, those, that's your standard unit vectors. What I've built now, what we got now, is, a, is, is like its own coordinate system, tangent and normal to the curve. And, and it's, it's a perpendicular kind of coordinate system, but it changes, it follows the damn curve. So if you're over here, it's a little different. If you're over here, at some point that unit, that normal vector flips over to the other side, because I said it's always on the concave side of the curve. <clears throat> so so it, it's like a, a traveling, changing coordinate system. And then and it's not horizontal and vertical, it's tangential and normal to the curve. So I've got a little coordinate system that travels on the curve that's always tangential and normal to the curve. That's, that's what these, these kind of these unit vectors do for me. And I think that's kind of powerful. I got this tangential and normal unit vectors, always. They travel along the curve in general, and, and, and they're always tangent and normal to the curve. <clears throat> See, and I don't know if you realize this yet or not. Let's put another vector up here. So I, I did that uh, r prime there. So that r prime is, is, is like velocity, you know. It was like velocity or r prime. You know, acceleration, we've been drawing, and we've been, we've been sketching curves and drawing velocity and acceleration vectors. And so, and maybe you never realized this before, but I'm going to... The acceleration vector always lived in here. It was always, the acceleration vector was always on the concave side of the curve. You never would draw a picture like that. That, that makes just, it doesn't make any sense. That's not an acceleration vector. It doesn't look like that. <clears throat> it's not on the convex side of the curve. In fact, part of what acceleration is doing is is making the thing curve. So, so the con, so the acceleration is always on this concave side of the curve. So now, wait a minute. It could be, it could be here, 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 here. I mean, it could be anywhere in here. Um, let me just say something. If I drew it right here, if I said this is the acceleration at this moment. So at this moment, I've got a velocity vector. I've got an acceleration vector. <clears throat> And what we've sort of said up until today is we sort of said, oh, this, this acceleration is either speeding me, speeding, it's either causing me to speed up or slow down. Because some of this acceleration is sort of helping or hurting my velocity. So that's causing me to speed up and slow down. Some of this acceleration is actually sort of pulling me and causing me to turn. That's what we're about to do then. Here's the exciting, cool part of the rest of this chapter is what we can do now is we can talk about the rest of this section is little a subscript t, which is called the tangential component of acceleration. The tangential component of acceleration. and little a subscript n, which is the normal component of acceleration. The normal component of acceleration. Because hang on, what did I just say a second ago? I said, <clears throat> I 
said that all along acceleration has been broken into how much horizontal and how much vertical is it? That's always been acceleration broken into I and J components. Uh, how much horizontal and how much vertical is it? That's acceleration or any vector broken into its horizontal or I and J components. Horizontal and vertical. Okay, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. What we want to do now is talk about the components of acceleration that are tangential and normal. So now I'm, I can break acceleration into how much of this acceleration is, 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 is helping or hurting the velocity and how much of it is perpendicular to the velocity. I mean, I want to know, I want to break acceleration into tangential and normal components at this point. So instead of I and J unit vectors, I can use T and N unit vectors. And I can write acceleration sort of differently. I could write this acceleration vector as the tangential component of acceleration times the unit vector in the tangential direction plus the normal component of acceleration times the unit vector in the normal direction. I mean, instead of my I and J components, I have T and N components, and that's these numbers. By the way, let me go back and finish this little formula. These will be numbers. These are not vectors. The, the tangential component of acceleration uh, has many formulas, maybe, but it has this one. A dot product T, which you know is a, a dot product is a scalar, so this will be a number. And it'll be whatever, right, that number. Uh, this A subscript N is the acceleration vector dot product, the unit normal vector N that we calculate here. So we can calculate T, we can calculate N. Once we got T and N, we can get these guys. And, and like I said, this is a half hour project if you ever wanted to do this. <laughs> on paper, it's a full page. It's a lot of the calculations can get quite lengthy. It doesn't look like it right away, but this one, this one's kind of lengthy here. Um, the calculations can get rather lengthy, uh, but the conceptual discussion is fun. It's lengthy too, but it's interesting and fun. Um, let me let me just speculate on this one. I want to write this acceleration vector. And I'm just looking at this picture, and I know I know there is a I know how long this is. This is one, and this is one, right? I mean that's the definition of those guys. They're they're one long. So how much of this a is in the tangential direction? Well, I would say uh, uh, that's one. Uh, there's one, but actually it's it's backwards, right? There, there, it's it's. How much is tangential? Looks like negative one, maybe uh, maybe negative two. Negative two tangentials. <clears throat> How many normals? Uh, maybe uh, one normal. There's one normal, and then uh, you know maybe half, one and a half normals. This acceleration vector, I'm calling negative two tangentials plus uh, one and a half, 1.5 normals. That's, that's what I see. Do you see that? Is that, is that? And so I'm gonna write it like that. I'm gonna write this acceleration vector. This is me just roughing it here. If that's a one, these are unit vectors, they're length one, I'm calling that a negative two T and a plus 1.5 N. Would you agree? Cool. Makes sense, right? I don't know, if I wanted to write him in I's and J's, what would I say? I'd say he's over, I mean, that's horizontal, right? I mean, that would be, uh, but that would still be a one. So uh, one, I'd say about 1.7, I'd say negative one, I'd say, this is just me guessing, negative 1.7 I's, and uh, definitely down one, uh, oops, one, two, 2.2, 2, 
J's maybe. You know what I mean? I mean, there he is in our old world of horizontal and vertical. This negative two here though, this negative two tangentials has nothing to do with left or right. And this positive 1.5 has nothing to do with up or down, right? I mean, that ain't what this is. This is not left or right or up and down. This is, this is 1.7 to the left, 2.2 down. This is two units opposite of the direction of motion and 1.5 units in the concave direction, I guess. <laughs> or how much tangential and how much normal it is. Right. Yeah, that's good. This is good stuff. That's the concepts. Writing, I mean, the, the, big, the big conclusion is you can write acceleration in terms of its tangential and normal components. Which, like I said, we vaguely referred to as, uh, you know, some of that acceleration helps me speed up and slow down, and some of that acceleration is causing me to curve. Well, dude, we got it right here. This is exactly how much contributes to speeding up and slowing down, because it's tangential, and this is exactly how much contributes to the curving. Curv curving. This is, this is the normal piece of acceleration. So this is breaking acceleration down into these important pieces. Right. Instead of just arbitrary horizontal and vertical pieces, these are this is awesome. Cool, cool. So maybe we should try a problem. <laughs> uh, so these notes are good, the pictures are good. Uh, to do an actual problem, we, we, uh, let's do. I'm gonna do one. Let's do one. And what's funny is I try to pick the easiest one I can. <clears throat> the easiest one I pick is tough. Watch, watch this. So I want to look at this guy. Just good old T comma T squared. He's, that's all he is. <clears throat> He's a two-dimensional vector. I can do this in 2D or 3D. He's a two-dimensional plane curve. He's actually just a good old parabola in case you didn't realize that. He's just that good old parabola, sits at the origin. So he's a pretty simple curve, but I want to do all these nasty calculations. I want to calculate all four of these things in general, in general, at any t. So that's what I want to do. So here I go. To get t capital T of t, I need r prime. Okay, I need r prime. Let's get r prime. That's not too bad. That's uh, one, two t, right? Hey, you know, I, that's our prime, and, and I got a little more work to do and think about. You know, eventually down here, look, I'm going to need A, and you know that A is our double prime, right? So I'm going to go ahead and get, I'm gonna, while I'm here, I'm going to get our double prime. I'll put it off to the side, but I won't need it. I won't need it for a while. But our double prime is, uh, like I said, just A, and it is uh, our double prime uh, 0, 2. I'll use that later. All right, I got R prime. Let's see, I guess I need his magnitude. And I don't know, you know, this was in some of our homework in 12.1 or 12.2. Um, I haven't done too many problems, but I can find his magnitude. I need his magnitude. Again, we do this all in general at any T. We're not, we're not gonna do this at a specific T. Yes, sir? Um, so the normal component of acceleration is and dot product to itself. No, it's a dot. Right, okay, okay, right. And a so is our a double prime. Unit and, and n is, yeah, it's a dot n. And a dot t. And, that, and, and so I need a eventually, which I got. A is just the good old second derivative. And, and some students think that this is just the good old, this is not. Look what it is. It's not. It's not r double prime over r. Anyway. Fine. So back to this. I'm trying to calculate this guy first. I'm going to do this in order. I'm trying to calculate this. So I need the magnitude of r double prime. Can you tell me what that is? Square root of 
one squared plus one two. squared plus two t squared. Right, so one plus four t squared. And that's it, dude, and you can't simplify that. So that's what you're stuck with. So now, what's the big old capital T of T? Here it is. Here it is. T of T is R prime divided by his magnitude. Cool. I'm done. I mean, I can divide it. That, you know, that, 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 that's a scalar in the denominator of this vector. I could, I, could, I could divide them into each component, but I just assume write it like this, I think. Cool, so I'm gonna put him in a block. That is my unit tangent vector at any time on this curve. Dude, I mean, it totally makes sense, doesn't it? It's R prime divided by his magnitude in general. I mean, no matter what, you know that this will be a unit vector. This is, this is R prime, at, and this is, R, this is the magnitude of R prime at any time. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, here comes the hard, that wasn't hard. Then here comes the hard part right here. In order to do the next guy, n, what do I need? I need t prime. So now I need t prime. And to do t prime, I think I need to do a quotient rule. And I may have never mentioned this, but the, 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 it could be a quotient rule. The numerator is a vector. The denominator is a scalar. But you can still do a quotient rule. You still can follow the rule of the quotient rule. Uh, the, Truth is, I think I'd rather move it up and do one of my product rules, although, yeah. So, so let me just, I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna write it as one comma two t, and I'm gonna move him up and call him one plus four t squared to the negative a half. So what I have is a vector value function times a scalar function. I want his derivative, and so I'm gonna do a product rule now, actually, instead of a quotient rule. Product rule. T prime. Here it comes. T prime. Okay, the derivative of the first, which is a vector, but it's zero comma two. The derivative of the first times the second, one plus four t squared to the negative a half, plus write down the first, one two t, and uh, and now I need the derivative of. Uh, that little scalar. I need the derivative of that scalar, which is negative a half times one plus four t squared to the subtract one, negative three halves times the derivative inside. The derivative inside is an eight t. Rule. You okay, Zachary? Yeah. Okay, cool. And now we should clean them up. And we can clean them up using our old algebra. Hey, is there a physics test today? Oh, that's why nobody's here. Uh, they love to go study for physics. All right, here we go. I want to clean this up. I want to factor out. I, this is an old Cal 1 technique where I factor out the 1 plus 4t squared. I got the 1 plus 4t squared to the negative a half. I got the 1 plus 4t squared to the negative 3 halves. I factor out the lowest one. So I factor out 1 plus 4t squared to the negative 3 halves. I'm just trying to clean up this derivative here. Uh, what does that leave me with? It leaves me with this vector, 0, 2, times what happened? I pulled the 1 plus 4t squared to the negative 3 halves out of 1 plus 4t squared to the negative 1 half, that leaves me with 1 plus 4t squared to the first. If you multiply it back, you get that. That's an old Cal 1 factoring technique. Pull out this lowest power, it leaves you with this dude here to the first. Plus, what does it leave me over here? The 1 and the 2t, the 1 comma 2t vector, this is factored out. It's not here at all. It's factored out. I'm left with a negative 4t sitting there. This is awesome. This is awesome. Um, <clears throat> when I'm getting down here to the bottom of the board, this is factored out. 1 plus 4t squared to the negative 3 halves. Uh, what is going on now? I 
think I want to distribute these scalars times these vectors and then add these vectors. I want to, this is a vector and a scalar, this is a vector and a scalar. Let's see what happens. If you distribute this times the zero, you get zero. If you distribute it times the two, you get a two plus eight t squared. Plus, over on this vector, if you distribute it times the one, you get a negative four t. And if you distribute it times the two t, you get negative eight t squared. If you add those two vectors, moving up here, this is t prime of t I'm working on here. Uh, I get the one plus four t squared to the negative three halves out front. And then I add up those vectors and I get a negative four t and a two. Actually, can I pull a two out? I'm pulling a two out. I'm gonna pull a two out. And it, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm pulling a two out. So I got a two out here with this scalar, one plus four t squared to the negative three half. So there's my scalar out front and my vector is negative two t comma one. What the hell is this? That's T prime. I did all that work to get T prime. My fancy factoring and all that to get T prime. Hold on, I ain't done. I'm looking to get this normal vector. In order to get this principal unit normal vector, I need T prime, which I got finally, but now I have to divide him by his magnitude. Oh God. <laughs> so I need his magnitude, his magnitude. I tried doing it, but uh, multiply the derivative and then trying to do the derivative of the vector, and that's worse. Oh, okay, hold on. To do his magnitude now, his magnitude, now here's the T prime, all cleaned up. So his so now what I have is a scalar times a vector. Somewhere, when we studied vectors, I may not have said it too loud, I'm gonna say it now though, kind of loud. I'm gonna write it here and then I'm gonna erase it. That if you do, if you're trying to do the magnitude of a scalar times a vector, you know, it's just the scalar times the magnitude of the vector. Kind of makes sense. If you got a vector that's three V, if you pull the three out and just do the magnitude of V times three, I mean, yeah. The magnitude of three V is the same as three times the magnitude of V. So in other words, if I want to do the magnitude of this thing, I can just pull the scalar out. The scalar can sit right here. And really all I got to do is the magnitude of this thing. And the magnitude of that thing is the square root of uh, 4t squared plus 1. 4t squared plus 1 or 1 plus 4t squared, just like this. Dude, let's clean this up. So this is to the negative 3 halves. This is to the 1 half. One half. So together, this is two, and this is one plus four t squared to the negative one, I think. Negative three halves and one half. Yep. Golly, hold on, now I'm getting a little confused. I think that's the magnitude of my t prime. Pretty cleaned up. Now hold on, what do I want? Remember what I want is n. n is t prime, now where's my damn t prime? Here it is, right here. t prime divided by the magnitude of t prime, which is right here. So t prime divided by his own magnitude is what we call n. Here it is, but it cleans up. The damn twos cancel, the twos cancel, this cancels. Let's see, what's the smart way to do this? Move him down, he's a positive three halves, add them together, and you get negative two t one all over one plus four t squared to the positive a half. Yeah, which makes sense.
That's a vector and that's his magnitude. This is a unit vector. Whew. But I told you it took some work. It takes some fancy derivative work, man. Some good derivative magnitude cleanup. Because you're doing this all very abstractly for any t. You're doing this as a function of t. So it takes some work. Wow. Hey, notice something. <laughs> I mean, there's my t. There's my n. They're perpendicular. Look at them. Do they look perpendicular? Split and negate. Just flip it and negate one. The problem is, remember, there's two of them, and you want to make sure you get the right one. And you're not really sure which one you should flip and negate. I mean, you flip them, you don't know who to negate. You don't know which normal vector you're going to get if you, you, mean, you got a 50-50 chance if you just flip and negate. But you can do all this work, and you get the principle. You get the right one. You get the correct normal vector when you do this work. Pretty awesome. Um, I got a little more I want to do here. That's uh, I'm going to get rid of all this good hard work here. Uh, but that was that was smart work, smart derivative product rule, factoring, good algebra work there. Uh, yep, I'm getting rid of it though. And what I want to do is here. Let me just I'm going to move this guy over here. So this n of t is here. And it, here it is, it's this negative 2t comma 1 all over this square root of 1 plus 4t squared. Yep, almost, a, yep. I mean, in 2d, in 2d, that's kind of should be how they look. Uh, but I think you got to do the math to do it. Um, let's try to calculate the last two things on this board here. This is all 12 important stuff in 12.4, the four important things kind of. So we did t of t, we did n of t. Let's, if I calculate these little guys, I just need these little formulas, a dot t and a dot n. Well, I, that's why I needed t and I needed n. Um, <clears throat> so to calculate the tangential component of acceleration, little a t, it's a scalar, and what it is is it's, the acceleration vector, which is right there, 0, 2, dot product, the tangent normal vector right there, 1, 2, t. I mean, sorry, the tangent unit vector right there. So that's it. That's no big deal. In order to calculate a n, it's the uh, dot product of, of the acceleration vector, dot product, the normal vector. And so this is fairly easily done. You can do a dot product fairly easily. I would just sort of keep the, I would dot product the numerators where the vectors are and keep this thing in the denominator and you get a zero plus a four. I guess you get a 40 over the square root of one plus four T squared. And that's a scalar quantity and that's the tangential component of acceleration at any time in general along this curve. Uh, if you cross dot product these, you get a 2 over a square root of 1 plus 4t squared. And that's the normal component of acceleration at any time along this curve. Yes, sir? Any chance that an happens to be uh, at over 2t? I mean, it is here, but sort of. Why would it be? I don't know. Okay. Well, I mean, I was just noticing it is here. Okay, yeah. No, that's just, nope. I don't think so. So, we did it. The things in the boxes, the boxes and the circles. We calculated all four of these things. We needed the T in the end to get to this place, but then that, that wasn't too hard. A little dot product there. Um, what I thought might be cool is also then, can we illustrate all this at somewhere? So I, I think I want to try that. I'm going to try to illustrate all this at, uh, let's see. 
at t at t equals um, we could try two if we try to do all this at t equals two uh, let me show you what the picture looks like so I'm gonna I think I'm gonna blow up this picture we're, we're on this curve where's the original curve here's the original curve Zero, zero, you're here. At one, one, you're at the point one, one. You're a parabola, by the way. Um, at the point two, when t is two, you're at the point, when t is two, you're at the point two, four. Two, Good job of illustrating this. So I'm going to illustrate all this happening right here at t equals 2. <clears throat> so at t equals 2, let's calculate the unit tangent vector at 2. Well, the unit tangent vector at two, here's my unit tangent vector in general. At two, it would be a one, four, all over the square root of 17. 17, which actually, if you go over here and take a look at that and think about it, that's one, four divided by his magnitude. Yeah, that's a unit vector. Um, <clears throat> here's the tricky part of this. To, to actually illustrate this, then I need to go over, I need to, at this point, I want to draw a unit tangent vector. It would be over 1 over the square root of 17, 17 and up 4 over the square root of 17. Well, that's a little tough to do. That's uh, about a 0.25 and a, almost a 0.9 up. I mean, there, that's not bad, I guess. That's him. He's one unit long. He's a unit tangent vector. He's tangent to the curve, but he's only one unit long. What are those decimals? Are you doing that? Yeah. Four Point. over the square root of 17. My calculator did it right. Point nine seven. Yeah. Oh, point nine seven. Yeah. And about a point two five or a point two three or something? Yeah, it's point two four. Point two four and a point nine seven. Okay. That's what I've tried to draw. All right, anyway, let's look at the normal vector at 2. The normal vector at 2. Well, let's see, where's my normal vector formula? Right there. When you plug in a 2, you get negative 4, 1. And over the square root of 17. Negative 4, 1 over the square root of 17. Well, that's back this way. It's perpendicular to him. He's over about 0.97 and up about, uh, wait, over to the left, yeah, over to the left, and then up a couple, just a quarter or so. There he is. He's supposed to look like he's normal there. I don't know how good a job I did there, but he's the little normal vector at this point. What's the acceleration vector at this point? Where's the acceleration vector? There it is, zero, two. So at this point, it's just over zero and up two. So he's just up two. That's the acceleration vector. Straight up two. What I'm interested in is these little components, the AT, the tangential component of acceleration, and the AN, the normal component of acceleration. I mean, at this moment, this, this red acceleration vector how, how much tangential is he and how much normal is he? My picture, my picture kind of sucks, to tell you the truth. <clears throat> my picture kind of sucks. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, let's just calculate this at t equals 2. So I'm doing this at t equals 2. Uh, at t equals 2, where is my, where's my, oh, there they are. 
So at t equals 2, the tangential component of acceleration is that number. That number is 8.94. Okay, thank you. 8 over the square root of 17, and you're saying it's 1.94. And the an is what happens when you plug a 2 in here, which is 2 over the square root of 17. And that number is 0.485. So let's just look at my acceleration vector. Does it look like it's roughly two tangentials? Well, he looks a little longer than two tangentials. I might have made him too long. Here, let's shorten him up. <laughs> He's almost two tangentials. One, two, yeah, that's pretty good. He's almost two tangentials. Oh, but he's over a little in the normal direction. He's about 0.5 of a normal. Does he look like he's 0.5 of a normal? Damn, not Fairly too bad. So. <laughs> not too bad. He's about two tangentials. See, there's your two tangentials almost, or 1.94 tangentials and 0.485 normals. There's a right triangle there. How much tangential is he, and how much normal is he, <clears throat> according to these unit vectors? And those are the numbers. It looks about right to me. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, cool. That's cool. That's one problem. Like I said, 30 minutes, three pieces of paper. Uh, that's one problem, doing all this to this one problem. So it's fun to do it to other two-dimensional curve. It's also fun to try to maybe to do it to a helix. Uh, it's, it's kind of, some of this work is kind of fun with the circular motion, the sine and the sines and the cosines work out sometimes pretty well when you do the math. Uh, Yeah, that's good stuff. Do I have to do any more of this? I wanted to point out... One thing I'll say is that for this chapter, I usually like you guys to memorize formulas, uh, but in this chapter, there's, there kind of turns out to be a lot of formulas, and I just give them to you. So you don't have to memorize any of this. Uh, I'm going to give you all this. I'm going to give you all this. Uh, actually, there's a summary in the back of the book, and I'm going to give you that, or I got, I got something typed up where I give you a bunch of formulas for Chapter 12. Um, that won't be true for Chapter 13, but it's true for 12. Uh, so, you don't really have to memorize them all, though. They're kind of common sense in a way. <clears throat> um, you know, again, one more time. So, where was this acceleration vector? Oh, here it was. This is the acceleration vector for this picture. You know, it was 0i and 2j. So it was 0, horizontal, 2, vertical, and there's a picture of it. But if I wanted to write this acceleration in terms, instead of i and j, in terms of t and n, it would be right there, 1.94 t's and 0.485 n's. I mean, that's what these are, the, the tangential component the tangential component of acceleration and the normal component of acceleration. It's components, it's vector components, tangential and normal vector components. <clears throat> and I mean, when, and it, yeah. I've given this question before, watch this picture. Now that you understand that, maybe you uh, look, if I, all I gotta do is give you this. And that's an N. I'm on some curve. That's a T. That's an N on some curve. And then I can, can you please sketch this? Negative 3T plus 4N. Can you find, can you sketch this acceleration vector? Well, sure. Uh, maybe I guess you can. 
you got to go negative three tangentials. Negative three tangentials is, I mean, that's one tangential. Negative three tangentials is one, two, three. Again, the negative has nothing to do with up or down or left or right. It has to do with opposite of tangential. So there's three tangentials, and then I got to do four normals. So there's one normal, and there's kind of a right angle here then because they're perpendicular to each other. So there's one normal, two normals, three normals, four normals. So here's a picture of this acceleration vector. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's negative three tangentials and one, two, three, four normals. And, there, and there's a right angle right there, right? Right. Just a conceptual kind of question. Easy. It's an easy question, but you got to got to know what I've been saying, right? <clears throat> cool. Um, okay, so now I want you to work in 12-4. Um, sort of, but it's hard work. I mean, I only assigned six or seven or eight problems or so. I mean, I didn't even assign. You can't do too many. Uh, they're, 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 pretty, they're gonna get lengthy. Uh, <clears throat> I think I'm gonna back up here. Um, Just, I'm just going to back up. We're, we're done with this topic. 12-4, big topic, big four big ideas. We're done with it, though, for, for now. Um, I'm going to back up and, and maybe do a word problem here in 12-3, and then that'll be the end of today. Um, just, to, just to go back to where we were Friday, a word problem in 12-3 about projectile motion here, maybe. Uh, I can do that one. 36. I'm just 36 caught my eye here. So I'm back in 12.3 looking at 36, which is a word problem, little projectile motion problem. My, I, what I did Friday was I, I, I gave you this, in, this generalized um, projectile motion uh, curve. Uh, it, and here's what it is. The X component is always V naught cos theta T. So again, this is something else to memorize, or actually I'll, I'll probably give this to you. The X component is that, and the Y component is H plus V naught sine theta T minus 16 T squared when we're dealing with gravity that's 32 feet per second per second. That number is half of gravity, 16 right there. So that's my good old projectile motion formula. Um, Real similar to the physics formulas. I, I, I did that in class Friday. We sort of talked about that. But now let's just try this question 36. It says a projectile is fired from, from ground level at an angle of 12 degrees with the horizontal. The projectile is to have a range of 200 feet. Find the initial velocity. Well, that's kind of interesting. I mean, they're either they're asking for something, but this time they're asking for find the initial velocity. That's what they're asking. What they gave me was that I'm starting at ground level and I'm firing at this angle of 12 degrees, uh, but I don't know the, this initial velocity here. Um, but it does take off in the shape of a parabola and it does land. Um, <clears throat> and they said they want it to land 200 feet downrange. So, <clears throat> you know, uh, this H in this problem is the initial height of the Y value. And in this case, H would be zero. So in this case, case H is zero, uh, my starting height. My angle theta is 12 degrees. Um, 
So I need to find the V naught. <laughs> One thing I told them Friday was I said that you can summarize these questions. Sometimes you read these, they're, sometimes they're long, complicated, cool word problems. What it comes down to though is you can kind of focus here and say, what you need to happen is when X is 200, Y is zero. It's landed. I mean, it, you know, like a, it's a complicated word problem about a, a, a rifle a certain way. Anyway, it really comes down to this. When Y is 200, I mean, sorry. When X is 200, Y is zero. And then even though we give you this projectile motion problem, which is a vector value function with its X and Y component, just like in physics class, it's kind of cool just to take the X and the Y equation out separately and treat them separately. So like I said, if X is 200, I'm going to say that uh, 200 equals the V naught cosine 12 degrees T. And I don't know the T. I don't know the V naught, and I don't know the T that it gets here when it gets to this spot. But, 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 but it will be 200. X will be 200. At the same time, though, at the same time, by the way, at the same time, uh, the y value will be zero. The y will be zero. That's this. This will be zero. The h is already a zero. We know that. Uh, the v naught, I don't know. The sine of 12 degrees, uh, I'll calculate. t is here. I don't know t. And it's minus 16 t squared. So the problem turns into... Uh, Two equations, two unknowns. That's usually how these problems turn in. You, you treat the x equation as one equation, the y equation as one equation, and there's usually two un, two unknowns. And you're looking for one. You're looking for v naught. Nobody nobody cares about the time, but you kind of need the time to find v naught. I think I'll uh, I think I'll solve for this time. If I solve for this time, it's 200 over v naught cosine 12 degrees. That's the time. I think I'll take that time and go plug it in for these times. Hmm, what will that be? I don't know if you want to use it, but sine 12 is pretty approximately 1. Ah, uh, wait, that doesn't seem right. 0.978. Yeah, that doesn't seem, maybe it does. Put cos 12 in degrees mode. Well, hang on, just let me go. Just let's just do this. So v naught sine twelve. Now, what am I doing? I'm plugging in my t. What's my t? My t. My t. I'm plugging in my t. So that's two hundred over uh, v naught cos twelve. Oh, that's kind of cool. So the v naught's actually canceled here, and actually you got sine twelve over cos twelve. You could tell me the tangent of twelve, and then you could multiply it by two hundred to tell you the truth. <laughs> uh, we'll get back to that. 16 <clears throat> times t squared, that's this t right here squared, so that's 200 over v naught cosine of 12 degrees squared. So you're right now, maybe you can help me. Well, I'm gonna be, I, I do, I need, you in, I need you in degree mode and I want the tangent of 12 degrees. Unless I just do it myself here. The tangent of 12 degrees is 0.212555 times 200. So I'm getting a 42.51 right here. What was the sine of 12? Well, I did the tangent of 12. Because I had oh, sine over okay. cosine. Right. And I got 0.212. And then what am I doing here? I'm squaring the 200. I'm dividing by cos 12 squared. I'm going to multiply. So I do all these numbers. Here I do this 200 squared divided by cos 12 squared. That's that big old number times 16. So I'm getting 668,000. 915.39. Wow. All over V naught squared.
That was me squaring that number, squaring that number, multiplying by 16. There it is, all over a B-naught squared. I should be able to handle this math. Uh, what do I do? Add this to the other side. Am I doing this right? I think I'm doing this right. <laughs> Six, 68, uh, 915.39 over the V naught squared equals the 42.51. Multiply by that, divide by that, and square root it. Right. So V naught is the square root of the 668915.39 divided by the 42.51. Wow. Follow that? Yep. Okay, cool. That equals that. I take the square root of that, and I don't, I screwed up. Ah, oh no. Oh no, I lost it. I lost it, I lost it. Hundred twenty five point four. Four five five now. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. It's algebra, really. I didn't do any calculus. Um Yeah. All right. Well that was fun. I think I'm gonna quit today. It's a little early. <laughs>